So today we're going to talk about lessons eight and nine. I'm combining these two because they are kind of short chapters, and um, but really cool ones if you ask me. We're going to talk about freeze frames, motion effects, and nesting effects. Uh, nesting first. So nesting is when you have effects on top of effects on top of effects. Okay. So in the sequence toward the end, runners out of the sun, you'll see how we have a um, we have a resize effect on here. Okay, so if I go underneath the resize effect, you'll see how we have a mask as well. All right, so the way that we can view that is by stepping into the clip. You do that by stepping in with these step in buttons that are down here. So step in or step out to get out of it. We're going to click on the step in button, and you can see how it isolates the clip. Okay, um, and then we can see the mask effect, which is right here. I step into it again, you'll just see the raw clip, all right? Which is kind of cool if you wanted to add another effect to it on this clip. I'm going to step out, so there's the mask, and then there's our resize effect, and when we're back to our regular timeline. Another way you can step into nested effects is by double-clicking right, right on the effect. So I double-clicked on the, mo on the um, resize effect, and it shows the runners out of the sun with the mask effect on it. I can double click on the mask effect and there's my raw video right there. So that is another way you can step into nested effects. Some of you guys have done this by accident and wondered why you have all these other tracks up here because you double clicked on it. If you double click on any type of effect it's always going to reveal the raw clip up here. Okay, it's because you're it's you're telling Avid that you want to step into the nested effect. So let's go back here. and I'm going to step into my mask and hit reveal my raw clip. Say I wanted to put a color effect on that. Say I want to make this black and white. I can go into my effect editor. Color effect. Bring the saturation all the way down to make black and white. Removes the color. And then I have a color effect, a mask, and a resize effect. I can double click on everything to collapse it and now I have my resize effect right here. And then I can go into my resize effect to uh, manipulate it however I want. Okay, And it manipulates everything, nothing behind it changes. So that is how you nest effects. All right. Say you want to put another effect on top of the resize effect. To do that, say we want to flop the image. Okay. So here I have my flop. I'm going to hold down the Option key and click and drag that and put it right on top of my effect. And now you can see I have flopped the image. Okay, So that's how you nest effects, by holding the Option key down and clicking and dragging effects right onto your segment. Then if I step into it, you can see all of my effects. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a freeze frame. So I'm just going to call up a random clip here. Let's see, maybe a shot I think his hand comes right here. So we'll make a freeze frame of this shot right here. So what I'm going to do is position my blue bar in my source monitor where I want my freeze frame to take place. Then I'm going to go up to the composer window and I'm going to go to freeze frame. And if you look right here, gives you options for how long you want your freeze frame. Because what it's going to do, it's going to make a separate clip for you. So you got to make sure that you select the, uh, the proper amount of time. If you want your freeze frame up a long time, make sure you give yourself enough, um, enough time for your freeze frame. Okay? So we're just going to do, we'll do 15 seconds. Okay? Do 15 seconds. I have my drive set, so it's going to the right drive. I hit OK. So as soon as you hit OK, it's going to ask which bin you want to send your clip to. All right. So I don't want it to go to the sequences. I'm going to put it in my practice bin. Hit OK. Creates it real quick. And then it loads it up automatically into your source monitor. So now I have my freeze frame right there. If I go to my practice bin, which is right here, you'll see the clip created. All right. Looks like a motion clip. That is my freeze frame. A couple of things about creating a freeze frame. Let's call up another clip. Um, maybe this one right here. 
okay? There's different types of ways to create a freeze frame. So say I go to freeze frame again, all right? And we want to use, y you see these um, selections down here using both fields or using interpolated fields. This is important to know when you're creating a freeze frame because the way Avid creates the freeze frame, okay, um, you, don't want it, you don't want your freeze frame to jitter. You want it to be nice and still, almost like a, like a picture, like a still picture. So if your shot has a lot of motion to it, okay, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna check using interpolated field. If your shot is steady or static shot with not a lot of motion to it, you can use both fields. Okay, so that is an important thing to understand and take note of. So interpolated, if there's a lot of motion in your shot, use using both fields if there isn't a lot of motion in your shot because you don't want your freeze frame to be jittery. The final thing is you could actually specify how long you want your freeze frame. Okay, so if you want it longer or, sh or shorter than the selections that they offer you, you can do that right there. Okay. So freeze frame, we're going to cancel that because we're not, we're not actually going to make a freeze frame. Okay. So again, go to composer and then to freeze frame and you will find all of the options for making a freeze frame. Motion effect. A lot of you guys have done this already too if you want to slow your video down or if you want to speed it up. Okay. Say we want to make this a slow motion. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the motion effect. Um, we're going to use the motion effect button on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark in and mark out what I want slowed down or what I want to actually, what motion I want affected. So you can see that I have a mark in and mark out set here. This is what I want to, this is the part of the clip that I want to affect. Okay. I'm going to click on my motion effect button or my motion effect editor. Now, if you don't have it here, you can find it under your fast menu. At least you're supposed to find it under your fast menu. If you don't have it there, which it wasn't under mine, you will want to go up to Tools, Command Palette, go to Effects, Motion Effect Editor button, and click and drag it underneath your source monitor. Okay, that's where it needs to go. Or you can also end it put it under your fast menu if you choose to, okay? So what I'm going to do is I have my mark in, mark out set. I'm going to click on my motion effect button. So again, we are at we're editing with 24 frames per second, okay? So when you click on your motion effect, it defaults at half speed, which would be 12 frames per second. You can change this to whatever you want, okay? I always play around with the speed. So, for example, if I want it slower, I can make it quarter speed, 25%. I can make it 75%. Say if I wanted to um, reverse it, say if I wanted to make a reverse shot, I could do real time, but negative 100%. So, if you put a negative in front of it, it's going to reverse your clip. Okay? So and if you wanted to make it faster, I could make it. 500%. So this is how you speed up, slow down, reverse clips if you want to. So what you what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to make it slow motion. So we'll just make it 50%. Okay. Um, you could strobe it if you wanted to strobe it. You can make it five frames. Um, it's actually kind of a cool little um, it's a cool little thing that you can cool little effect you can add to your video if you needed to. Um, I'm going to hit create and render. Again, it's going to ask me, it's going to make a new clip. So it's going to ask me where it wants me to send my motion. I'm going to send it to practice. Creates it real quick. Then when I loads it up automatically, and when I play it, I have a nice slow motion clip that I can edit into my frame. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do fit to fill. So fit to fill is a cool little um, cool little thing that you can use. So for example, let's um, let's use this clip right here. So I'm going to match frame. Oh, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to match frame this real quick. So now I have this same clip right here. 
and then I'm going to mark clip this section. Okay, so I'm going to mark clip this section right here, so that's highlighted. I have my source video right here in the monitor. All right, and I what I want to do is I want to slow. I'm just going to slow this down just for um, just for the heck of it. We'll just do a mark in right there, and then say we're going to mark out right there. Okay. Then I'm going to click on my Motion Effect Editor button. And then I'm going to click on the Fit to Fill, which is right here. And now it's automatically going to adjust the parameters to fit this into here. Okay. Then I'm going to hit Create and Render. Again, pick your bin. Creates it real quick. And now this is the same exact time as this, and I can go ahead and overwrite that in. It's the same exact time, and it fits it perfectly. You notice how it's slow. So Fit to Fill is it's a cool tool. I don't know if you, uh, you know, I don't know when you might use it, but um, the option is there if you need to use it. Okay. So to review, nesting effects. Stepping into effects, holding the option key down to create nested effects, freeze frames are under composer. Oop, hold on, click on that first. You always have to make sure your source monitor is clicked on. Freeze frame, and make sure you ha don't have a motion effect button loaded in there. So, composer, freeze frame, okay, specify your duration that you want. And then, if there's motion to it, interpolate it. If it's more of a steady shot, use both fields. Okay, so that's really important. Um, and then finally, your motion effect editor button is right here. Okay, and if it's not here, go to Command Palette and put it there. That's something that you should definitely have. That's a great tool to use. That is all for um, lessons eight and nine. Um, ex as always, questions you need to ask, and Leon out.